Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting. And today, coffee in hand, we are going to build a moving light model in X lights. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I wanna show you this uh, today. The first is just to explain the process. Uh, if you're building a moving head custom model for a moving edge you have, it can be really confusing. Um, there can be settings and fields that you have to fill out that you might not be sure what they're supposed to do. And ultimately, what I see a lot is it stops people from using moving heads in their show because they get frustrated with it. That's also where we come in because with the Dominar beam, the Dominar Lampa, any of the moving heads that we have available uh, from Learn Christmas Lighting, we provide those for you. So you get a professionally built custom model from us when you, build, when you buy those lights. It, in fact, anybody can download it off the web. And so that will save you the frustration of this whole process. But I want to show you this if you're doing it on your own or you're curious or whatever. So let's dive in. Uh, the first thing I've done here in X Lights is I've just gone ahead and built a blank show folder. I've set up a Falcon F48 that I use in my show on the ground. I literally just pulled it out of the front yard uh, at the end of the show. And boom, we've got a Dominar Lempa here in the dome because I was going to shoot some more video with them anyways. So I had one in here in the office. Okay, first thing to do is uh, go to your layout tab. And again, I, I recommend while you do this, have a light set up hooked up to your controller because in a couple minutes we'll test it. Hopefully the fan noise from the Lempa isn't too loud. It's a fairly loud unit. Okay, so we're gonna go here to DMX and create a moving light 3D, drop it in our layout, okay? And hit save. Now. The moving light 3D model in X lights works both in the 2D version of the layout, the preview, and the 3D. So you don't have to be in 3D to use this model. Um, it's just called 3D because it does tend to look somewhat 3D um, in X lights. So then we get all of our options down here as to how to set up this fixture. So I'm going to pull up in my other window the Dominar Lempa manual right here. Um, yeah, we're not going to have room to do it side by side. And I'm going to go to the chart that shows all the DMX channels. This is what you want to do with any light that you have. And I see, first and foremost, number of channels. I have a 16-channel fixture. So that reserves 16 DMX channels for this light. Now, what I'd like to do now before I do anything else is I'm going to go ahead over to the controllers here. And I'm going to go visualize and drag my model now that it's there. It has its strings, it has its 16 channels, and put it to the serial port that I'm plugged into. Save, upload my output to the F48. And then what I wanna do quick, just before I do anything, is quickly pop a new sequence open. Just an animation, quick start, doesn't matter. Pull a DMX effect down to my DMX moving head and turn on output. And then what we're gonna see, and this is key, is we're gonna see it go somewhere. And it looks like, I wonder if my Falcon's still rebooting. It might be. Uh, let's see here. But, so it looks like it's, it's doing something a little bit funky there. Uh, let me go double check on that and be right back. All right, the problem I had actually is a problem you'll never have probably is that I had another DMX console on my network over there uh, running with some, some channel information being output. Again, if you're not a stage lighting person like me, that's probably never gonna happen to you. And so I, I identified that by unplugging the DMX. Um, it stopped moving, then I said, okay, it's getting some sort of data uh, that it shouldn't be. Boom, change that up, we're good to go. So I turned off my output to lights, but the reason I did this is I wanna see what the starting position is of that light with 0% DMX values. Where does it point to? Because we're gonna use that as we build the custom model here in X lights. So now we can go back to the layout tab, we can give it a name. I'm just gonna call it Dominar Lempa example so I don't get confused uh, with my real custom model. So now we start to dive in here. Um, so the number of presets, the next field here, is uh, one that I'm not sure is fully functional yet. I've tested it, I've played with it, I've looked at the documentation. I think it's something that's coming that's not quite here yet. Next we have the channels. So for like pan, tilt, color, dimmer, and shutter, um, you're able to 
enter those channels in here intelligently so that Xlights can work with them on a little deeper level than just raw DMX values. So for this example, my pan, I believe, is 10. My tilt is 12. My color type is a color wheel. My color wheel channel is 1. My dimmer channel is 3, I believe. Yep. My shutter channel is 2. And then shutter open threshold, they, they basically have a point where they say, okay, where does your shutter open in X lights? And for this fixture, I'm um, just to show you, the shutter is closed from zero to three, then it strobes from four to 103, is open from 104 to 107, um, and then more strobe and then open, and then more strobe and then open. I, for most fixtures, just for simplicity's sake and ease of remembering, um, I typically just enter 255, the full channel value, as the shutter open value. And that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, most fixtures with a mechanical shutter, uh, which is going to be any lamp-based moving heads, your, your LED-based ones do not have a mechanical shutter. Um, they just dim electronically, uh, you know, with the LED dimming up and down. But anything with a mechanical shutter, generally 255 or the channel at full, is going to be uh, where that shutter's open. So I'm just gonna enter that here for the open threshold and the on value. Then we have beam display length and width. This is just really just to give you the preview of what it looks like. It doesn't affect the output at all. Just uh, it's something you can customize as you see fit for your particular fixture. Uh, if you have, it's kind of tuned as you can see here for these beam type moving heads that have a super narrow beam. Um, but if you had a wash light or something wider, you might play around with it. Controller, I've already assigned it to my F48, and I dragged it to my uh, vis through on my visualizer. We did that a few minutes ago. Again, this is not a tutorial on that aspect, so we're not going to dive deep into that right now. Do, 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 do. Then we have our color wheel. So our color wheel is cool because we're actually able to enter in here the different colors and bring them up. And so what I like to do for that is go ahead and set the size. And so for example, I have, we'll just double check the manual here. I have 14 colors plus white. Um, white being open, being not a color, most moving heads are going to be documented that way where they say, hey, it has white or open plus this many colors. In X lights, we're gonna count white as a color. So I'm gonna say 15. And then we have a slightly tedious task, which is filling them all out. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the minimum DMX value for each color. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when you enter these DMX values in X lights, uh, they'll, in the DMX effect, they'll actually show the color in the preview, which is awesome. Um, and so like red starts at 10 light amber it's a light amber starts at 20 and so on so i'm going to go fill out the rest of these colors and then show you what i did all right so now i went in there and i defined out all the colors you notice x lights will name colors um if you choose a color that it kind of knows from the color picker like the straight yellow it called fuchsia, magenta, I don't know. But regardless, you know, it gets you in the ballpark, right? Um, so then we've got our shutter channel. We did all that, blah, 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 blah. So the next thing I would do to get started is go ahead and fill out the rest of the pan and tilt channels. Now, I've pulled up a cheat sheet in my other window of how I did it on our official Dominar Lempa model um, because uh, there's a few settings here. So... Uh, one of the first ones is the slew limit or the degrees per second okay now this one's a little bit hard to find and it's not essential that you put this one in here it doesn't affect the dmx output one bit but it does affect the preview in x lights and so if you can get it close or exact to what you have then it's going to make your sequencing easier and better because your your preview in x lights is going to be more accurate um, i always recommend to people if you're programming with moving lights uh, get one out if you can, if you have one, um, and plug it into a controller, just so that you can see how it's moving. Because, you know, the preview in X lights is fine. And we have 3D model previews, uh, 3D visualizer files 
for X lights for all of our moving heads. Um, the one for the lamp is coming, but we'll have it soon. Um, if not, when this video comes out and on our resources page and, um, and they're a great way to see things, but even that 3d visualizer file, it's not perfect. It's not exactly what you see and nothing beats having the real fixture in your space while you're programming. Um, so the slew limit is, again, I, I take a video of it for all our fixtures and figure out how quick or how slow they move and then go ahead and fill that out. So it's 210 for this guy for pan. And then for the tilt is 192. Next, we have the orientation. So this is all about, okay, you know, we see on the screen, this guy is pointing right. And right now I've got mine in my dome the way I like it set. Cords are coming out sideways of the fixture. The cords on the dome are facing the back, um, which is how I set them, of course, because who wants to see the cords? So he's actually from the front view pointing right and somewhat down, right? And so it's pointing right, that part's good, but the somewhat down is not. And with the tilt orientation, you actually can't do negative. So the values I found, just looking at my other screen, are that my tilt orientation is 210. And then my pan orientation is 90. Uh, another thing you'll note with moving heads, um, and that's actually still not right. I think I had them turned in my display. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and take that to 180. And we should be close here. Um, and then another thing you're gonna see, so we see, okay, that looks really similar to what we have in person. Um, and the other thing that you're going to see here is that for the pan and tilt values, um, the degree of rotation, I believe, is clockwise in x lights by default. If your fixtures moves counterclockwise like the Lempa does, you will find that entering a negative value. Oops, I hadn't entered the degree of rotation. It should be 270. Um, and adding a negative value in there is going to be your best bet. Now, there's one last step before uh, we're really ready to rock and roll and test it. And that is naming the channel. So like right now, you know, if I go to the sequencer and I had this DMX out before, right? It says channel one, two, three, four, five, six. It just says channel numbers. It doesn't actually label them. And sure, I could turn on the output and like, for example, so like that's my, my tilt and I see it's working. I see that on camera it looks backwards, but in person it's doing what I want, um, so that's good. And But there's no labels, right? And so that's not helpful. Um, so we go back to layout here, and we just go to, down here, to the strand or node names. And then this is where um, generate node names is going to speed you up because it's going to put in the channels it knows. But then the rest of the channels, we got to go ahead and... Uh, and fill those guys out, all right? And so, and so, uh, for example, channel four, just say that's the gobo wheel. Channel five is my first prism. Channel six is my prism rotation, which in this fixture, with seven being the second prism, uh, the rotation is on both of those. Depends on your fixture as to how that works. How, how rainbow is eight, nine is whoops, jumped ahead there, and then we lost it because we didn't hit okay. Awesome! Um, so now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna fill this all out. No need for you to watch this, and we'll be right back. All right, so now we've generated those node names, we'll hit okay, we'll hit save, and now if we go over to the sequencer. Oh, I thought I was going to have to delete the effect and get rid of it. Nope, because x is awesome. We have all of our parameters here. And so that's really it. Now, the last thing to do is test everything, right? So this is my moving head pointing to the right. Awesome. And the first thing I like to do is just go and like, okay, tilt it. Right, so now we're straight up and pointed slightly right at a value of 128. Most uh, fixtures should tilt straight up. Okay, this one's not quite, and so I see, okay, I might be a little bit off, so I'll go and correct that. Um, and then, but we got the direction right, we know that much, because now we're going the other way. Then on the pan side, it's gonna be the same thing, you go, okay, 
Start panning. So now we're facing backwards. Yep. Now roughly we're on the other side. And now we're facing forward. Killer. Um, then you just want to check out everything else. Make sure it works. So for most fixtures, uh, you will need the shutter at full. If it is a mechanical shutter, a lamp-based unit, uh, you'll need that shutter to an open value. And then the dimmer will work. Okay. As you can see, it's on. I'm going to keep it really low. Um, because with beam, hot beam moving heads like the lamp, the Dominar Lampa, um, if you keep it focused on an object for a long time at full, um, even just a few minutes, it can start to burn holes in things. Um, it is a hot lamp. And so I can go through these, you know, check my gobos. Yep, we see them working. See my prisms, right? It went in. Perfect. Go ahead, makes it a little more interesting for you guys. My rainbow swatch, yep, it's rainbowy. Um, my color, most importantly, you can see here. Okay, as I go through the color wheel, now it's red. Now it's uh, light amber, green, orange, and I don't know how well that shows through to you. It does, but magenta there, magenta in the model. Um, and so this is the kind of stuff you want to look through just as you're working with that custom model as you're generating it to make sure that you're getting the most out of your moving head. And so when it's time to sequence or import another sequence uh, and possibly remap those channels, you're gonna have your best foot forward. Again, uh, this thank you so much for watching. If you're new to this and you're like, whoa, that was overwhelming, don't worry. Uh, over at Learn Christmas Lighting Store, we are the leaders in moving heads and we wanna help you get the right moving heads for your display. We offer a great value, really awesome quality fixture, but not at the price of the stage lighting vendors. Yes, it's more expensive than direct from China, but it's a slamming deal. We have a lot of satisfied customers. People love our units, and when they've had them a few years, they're still happy with them, which is the big difference uh, from uh, the people that buy the China vendors moving heads to ours. So if that sounds good, head over, and uh, we're going to follow up more on programming, on working with moving heads this month here on Learn Stage, Learn Christmas Lighting, and we will see you guys in our next video. Merry Christmas.